we're going to prove a beautiful statement in group theory that's great practice with the elementary concepts of the group axioms and subgroups of a group. The statement is that let G be a group, G cannot equal to the union of two of its proper subgroups. That's what the statement is saying. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain the intuition very visually and also give a rigorous mathematical proof and watch till the end for a very beautiful consequence of this, which is that the union of two subgroups of a group cannot itself be a subgroup. Okay, so that's really cool. So let's dive into what the proof should be. And first of all, starting with the intuition. So I'm going to draw a beautiful picture to show you what's happening. So here what we're going to do is we're going to assume that we have these subgroups H and K of a group G. And we're going to prove this by contradiction. So we're going to show that let's assume for a contradiction that G is H union K, but G is neither H nor K. Okay, and we're going to derive a contradiction from that. So if it's true that G is H union K, but G is not H and G is not K, the fact G is not K will imply there is some X that is not in K, but it has to be in H because G is H union K. I'm going to go very precisely through this shortly, but I'm just showing this to you visually first. Similarly, we're going to choose a Y in K that is not in H. And then what we're going to do is we're going to show the product XY is outside of H and K. That's going to be the approach. But let me explain very intuitively why this approach will work and how we come up with it. So let's think about what it means for something to be a subgroup. And I'm going to write this for H. What it means is that if A is in H and B is in H, we know that A times B is also in H. Okay, that's what it means to be a subgroup, or one of the conditions for being a subgroup. We also require that inverses of elements in H are in H, and the identity element is in H. But let's think about this axiom first for a subgroup. Now, I'm going to change this very slightly, and it's still going to be true. It's going to be a minor modification, and I'm going to give you an intuition for it. So the minor modification is going to be, let's say that A is in H, and B is not in H, then I'm going to show, or then we can say that AB is also not in H, okay? So why is this true very intuitively? We can prove this with the group axioms, but one way I like to think about it is if we think about the group of additive real numbers, okay? So the real numbers with the operation of addition, and if we think about the rational numbers being a subgroup of this group, okay? So we know that being a subgroup means that rational plus rational, Okay, so it's closed and or addition. Okay, that's the group operation here. Rational plus rational is also rational. We know that. Okay, that's closure under addition of the subgroup of rational numbers. Now, if we change this up, we can also deduce that rational plus irrational. So here, H is the rational number. So you have a rational plus something that's not rational. Rational plus irrational is also going to be irrational in this case. Now, why is that true? Well, it's true because, if you've seen this argument before, we know that if it were rational, then we could deduce that this irrational number is a difference of two rational numbers, which has to be rational. So that's a contradiction, okay? So it cannot be irrational, it has to be rational. And it's the same principle at play here. So what we can, why is this true? Well, assume for a contradiction that AB is in H. So here's the little proof of this statement. The proof is, if AB is in H, then using the fact, just like we would deduce here, we would subtract the rational on both sides of the equation if the right-hand side were rational. To deduce this irrational is rational, which is a contradiction. In the same way, if AB is in H, we can use the closure of H under multiplication and inverses because it's a subgroup to say that then A inverse times AB is also in H, but that is just B. Okay, and that is a contradiction, which I denote by a hash. Okay, so we know that B is not in H in this case, so therefore it cannot be the case that AB is, not, is in H. It has to not be in H. Okay, so this is a proof of this statement. And why is this statement cool? Because now, and I'm going to erase this here, now what we can deduce is that our idea for proving this, you know, this theorem is we, we went by contradiction. We said that assume G is equal to H union K. So this was the proof by contradiction. Assume for a contradiction that G is equal to H union K, but G is not equal to H and it's not equal to K. Now, given that, we can, we can say that we can find an X. So pick X 
in h minus k. Why can we do that? Why can we pick an x in h minus k? Because we know that g is not equal to k. So we know that there is an element of g outside of k. And that element of g must be in h, because g is h union k. So pick x in h minus k and y in k minus h. Okay? This is the set differences of h and k and k and h respectively, which is schematically in this Venn diagram here. Now, if we pick x and y in this, in this way, we know the following. So we know two statements, and I'm going to um, use this here. So I'm going to erase this. We know that because x is in h and not in k, and y is not in h, remember that y is in k minus h. So you know x is in h, and y is not in h. So therefore, we know that x, y is not in h. OK, that was what we just proved on that side of the board, what I just erased. Similarly, because we know that y is in k, right? y is in k, OK, um, and x is not in h, k. OK, so x was chosen in h minus k, so x is not in k. That implies that x, y is also not in k. It's the same idea as before. In this case, we have to do a different side multiplication. So we have to say that if x, y were in k, you multiply on the right by y inverse which has to be in k because k is closed under inverses. Okay, so we know, for example, in this case, that implies that um, y inverse is in k. And we could do the same argument to show that, therefore, x has to be in k if x, y were in k. And that would be a contradiction. Okay, so we know that x, y is in neither h nor k. But that, of course, is a contradiction because we know that g is equal to h union k and g is a group. So it's closed under multiplication. So therefore, x, y is in g, but it's not in h union k, which contradicts our assumption. Now, to end the video, I'm going to show you this very beautiful thing, which is super cool and very familiar from linear algebra. Actually, this statement is all true in linear algebra and I encourage you to recollect that argument. If you have two subspaces of a vector space, then they cannot have a union equal to the whole vector space. But similarly, if you have two subspaces of a vector space, their union cannot itself be a subspace unless one is contained in the other. Okay, and why is that? So I'm going to state that precisely and prove it very quickly. So this is the statement, let G be a group. If H and K are subgroups of G, then H union K is never a subgroup of G unless H is contained in K or K is contained in H. So what's the quick proof of this? And I encourage you to pause the video and try to see why this proof should come from what we just proved. Okay, so drop a comment down below. How would you prove this? Pause the video before you do so. So here's the way I look at it. We again go by contradiction. If H union K were a subgroup of G, then we would be able to say, apply the previous statement to H union K, okay? So the previous statement said the union of two subgroups cannot be the whole group unless one of both of the one of the subgroups is the whole group, right? So if you apply the previous statement, okay, so apply the previous statement, what I had at the beginning of the video, um, 2H contained in HK contained in H union K. So there's a proof by contradiction. That would imply that if H union K were a subgroup of G, then we'd be able to deduce that either H is equal to H union K or K is equal to H union K. But of course, the union of two subsets being either of the subsets implies one is contained in the other. Okay, so apply the previous statement to that. This is a proof by contradiction. And then you would be able to deduce that therefore one of H or K is contained in the other. So that's the argument. Thanks so much for watching and I've got lots of cool content on my channel. I'm developing group theory series to really teach the fundamentals of group theory and how to think about group theory right from the basics. So check out my playlist. As it grows, it's gonna have lots of videos for you to choose from. It's gonna appear on the screen there. I'll see you in that playlist or on another video on my channel. Wish you all the best and catch you in that video or elsewhere.